you are very welcome when God is silent. And I want to say that we've all at different points in our lives waited for something. We've prayed to God about something and we've had to wait for our answers. But how does your faith bear up when you've had to wait longer than usual? When the waiting, you almost want to give up. There are tons, people are, people are beginning to talk about you behind your back and it's causing a rift even in your home. What do you do? But God says, wait. So what do you do whilst you wait? Do you think God has left your side? Some of us have already encountered this long wait and some of us are about to experience it. I emphasize the long wait because yes, waiting is relative, but you would agree with me that when you pray to God for something and you have to wait a month or two for it, you know, you don't, you're uneasy, but then your breakthrough comes. But what if you've had to wait for a child for 25 years? How does your faith bear up? And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. The scripture we put in the chat, sorry, not in the chat, on the flyer, it's from Habakkuk. And it says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But in the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. My sisters, if there's any of you who is waiting for something, I mean, it could be so many things. Tonight, our sisters will share about um, childbearing and other things. But I would wish that even as you listen, the Lord will minister to you who's waiting for something. And remember that. Once God has spoken, it will come to pass. We've learned in the past weeks that trials and tests are meant to mature us. So as you wait for whatever it is you are waiting for, please do not take your eye off God. He has a plan for you. There's a reason for your wait. And he just wants to come and find you waiting so that he can bless you. So our sisters will share their stories with us tonight. And even as they share, they will tell us how they experience God's The day started. All right, just one second. Sister Doreen, are you here? Please. Yes, please. I'm here. All right. The reception is
Sister Sweet, I'm beginning to pray in the spirit and ask God to take. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, one second. Hello, can you hear me, please? It's uh, dragging. It's dragging quite a bit. Can we hear it? Okay. I'm trying to log in um, to another um, network. So, since please, you can take over whilst I sort myself out. Please. Thank sure. you. All right, sure. So, um, sisters, we just thank God. Um, uh, Sister Doreen, by God's grace, will be sharing with us the journey that God has walked with her through. And I know that it is, it is not for nothing. It's not accidental. But it's a very deliberate act of the living God that we are gathered as we are and that she is sharing what the Lord will have her share with us. Can we please take a moment to just pray, commit her ministration, not only hers, but there's another sister who will speak with us this evening. We want to commit each one who will speak unto the Lord. And just ask him to speak through them exactly what he wants them to say. And also commit everyone who will hear, both hearing live as well as those who will listen to the recording. We, we are asking that because God's word does not return to him void, it shall indeed accomplish the work for which he has set all of this up. Please let's pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> Thank you for the privilege. Thank you so much, Lord, for our sisters. Daddy, we submit it all to you in the name of Jesus. This whole thing, our lives, our stories, they are yours. This altar, your people, those of us here, those who will listen, we are all yours. Be glorified in our midst in the name of Jesus. I pray that each one will speak as the spirit of God leads her to speak in Jesus' name. I commit our hearts, our hearing unto you, O oh God, cause us to see in Jesus' name. Let every blindfold be taken off in Jesus' name. Let faith rise up, confidence in you, in your word, understanding, O oh God, for our respective journeys. Let Jesus Christ be exalted. Let us walk with him. Let the glory be to God. Let the glory be to God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sister Marine, you are very welcome. Please go ahead and share as the Lord um, has led you to, if you are ready. Yes, please. I'm ready. Yes, Hello. Okay. Please, let's pray. Yes. Psalm 119, verse 130. The entrance of his word gives us light, gives understanding unto the simple. Lord, help us to understand your word. Help us to abide by your instructions and help us to let your word bring us relief. And help, and help us to know your word more as we deliberate or dive deep into your word this evening. <clears throat> the theme for today's program is when God appears silent. I've also added, when God appears silent, pray to be still. As Christians, we are not always going to hear God's voice. But let's take a clue from Job. Then we can learn a few things. I always like to relate my life experiences to this so that it will be easy for us to understand what I'm trying to explain. I was in the wilderness, into brackets. If I say wilderness, I was in the state where God appeared to be silent on me. For 10 years, I prayed. For 10 years, I was looking for the fruit of the womb. And God would simply not hear me out. He was silent. One would, would say, did you really pray well? Yes, I did. I remember one doctor said, there is no way if I'm asking, my, my child asks me for bread or for food, 
it will take me 10 years to give my child. So somebody will say, do you really pray well? If God is a parent or God loves us so much, why would he take you 10 years for him to respond to your need? Indeed, I prayed. I served God endlessly. Tried to live a life worth pleasing to God. I was a regular church goer. I sowed seeds, practiced my faith. I did everything that I was supposed to do just to hear from God. I remember we used to gather and pray together for women looking for the fruit of the womb. Everybody in that group conceived. Everybody, with the exception of me. God was so silent on me. Sometimes the pastors will call me and say, Doreen, come. The Holy Spirit is leading me to ask you to pray for these women. And lo and behold, when I touch these women, everybody goes home and come back. Oh, I'm pregnant. And I was still, and as for me, no show. The same women that were all praying together, they said, ah, there's something evil going on. You have done something so bad. Why won't God hear you? When we pray the same prayers, we practice the same faith, and God has done it for every, we're 12 in number. When God goes silent on you, <laughs> everybody conceived. But sometimes when God wants to stretch you, he's stretching you for a reason. He's gone silent on you because he wants to use you for his work. There's a reason why he's gone silent on you. Can you stand the test? Can you hold on to the faith even in, the, in times of dying, in the face of divorce, in the face of destruction, in the face of fire? And he's silent on you. What do you do? I remember one particular lady that the pastor asked me to pray for. We prayed that uh, the, the woman didn't fell down. And we didn't hear from her anymore. I went to the hospital one time, to, to the to Lister Hospital to see my guy. And I saw this lady heavily pregnant. I was so happy. Sincerely in my heart, I was happy for her. I knew, oh, if God has done it for her, it means that God is going to do mine for me. This lady just turned her back on me. It's like, you are an outcast. Don't, don't, come, don't even come close to mine. Miracle. When God goes silent on you, even your friends, your loved ones will also go silent on you. Can you still hold on to your faith? Can you still hold on to your faith? I left the hospital and came back, came back home and I cried. I cried bitterly unto God. I said, God, please talk to me. Don't push me to a place where I would have to go and seek, your, seek the answers I'm looking for somewhere. I've become an outcast to people. Now people are even afraid of me. They think there's something wrong with me. I've done everything I needed to do. I would pray and pray and pray. If everybody's praying for 10 minutes, I would go 20, 30 minutes just to prove to God, look, I love you. Don't be silent. What have I done that you can't forgive me? When God goes silent on you, what do you do? After that episode, I decided to go back to the drawing board with God. You know, God is a businessman. He wants you to fulfill your side of the deal and he'll come through for you. So one day I said, God, please, I need to talk to you. So I, in the evening, I, and I, don't, I pulled the chair. I said, please sit down. Let's talk. We are, I mean, we want, I want us to talk. I'm not praying. I want to talk. Talk to me. What's it, what is wrong with me? Why have you gone so dead on me? What is not that I'm not doing right with you? Sometimes it's good when you go round, 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 and you are not getting the answers, go back to the drawing board. And when I sat there, I cried, I prayed, we talked, and I began to examine like my life. In this Bible verse, Psalm 66, verse 18. If I had not confessed my sins in my heart, my Lord would not have listened. I found that out that the day I was crying, I was talking to God, talk to me. Let, if you don't even speak to me, let the pastor come. Let the prophecy come and say, you are going to have a child. I mean, tell me something, give me a sign. I don't even need you to talk, just give me a sign. 
So, and I found out that my heart was heavy, was burdened with so many things. When God goes silent on you, go back and search. Number one, examine your life. When God goes silent on you, take a pause, take a minute, take some time off and examine your life. To me, I realized my heart was burdened with so many things. I had unforgiving spirit. Sometime ago, you said this about my pregnancy, my childbirth, and I put it in my heart. The moment I see you, I'm angry with him. I was a tongue speaking person. I was praying in tongues. I was praising God. I was doing everything. But my heart was filthy. I put so many people's name in my heart. You said this against me. You said this against me. Example, you are looking for your husband. Somebody says something. You put it in your heart. My heart was heavy, burdened. I had unforgiving spirit. Had, of, everybody had offended me. Everybody. Offense is also a very bad tool. Everybody had offended me around me. I was bitter about everybody. I didn't understand why God, why God was silent on me and was responding to people. I was pained because I could not bear fruit. Envy, jealousy, anxiety had set in. I was frustrated. I was depressed. I was lonely. And all these things bottled up in my heart. I prayed bitterly. And I cried and asked for forgiveness. Psalm 66, verse 18. If I had not confessed my sins in my heart, my Lord, my Lord would not have listened to me. When God goes silent on you, he's not a liar that he should lie. If he has said it, then he will do it. There is something wrong sometimes. That's why he's going silent on you. Sometimes go back to the drawing board and do your part of the deal. I went back and I realized that my heart was too begging for even God to speak to me for me to hear. My heart was overburdened for God to speak to me for me to hear. So one, when God goes silent on you, one, examine your life. When you have done everything, you have done everything to please God and he's still silent on you. Examine your life. Psalm 66 verse 18, examine your life. Number two, accept God's authority. Accepting God's authority also makes us trust God. We realize that God is in control and can be trusted. Accept God's authority. Job 13, 15. Though he slay me, I will hope in him. Not because he's silent on you, he lets go the authority of God and go searching. When God goes silent on you, are you still going to accept his authority? Are you still going to abide by his rules and his regulations? When God goes silent on you, this is the time friends and family will come and convince you to leave the authority of God and go searching for answers. Since God is silent on you, are you going to do that? Your very close friends will tell you, hey, for how long are you going to sit down and pray, 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 pray? Yenfa baby, oh, yenfa baby, na nini? Are you going to allow the authority of God to be on you? Or you're going to go searching for answers? It happened to me. Never did I and I, never did I think that I would go to that extent. I was facing rejection. I was facing depression. I was facing divorce. I was bitter. I was frustrated. I don't know. Nothing pleased me. Nothing made me happy. I just wanted a child. I had allowed my want to overtake me. My want had taken the love of God for me. My want had taken everything. So when people that I knew and trusted were all tongue speaking, women came telling me, Master, you have to pass somewhere. I got to a time. I let go. I lost my God. But if I'd listened to series like this, I don't think I would have, it would have taken me 10 years to do what, for God to do what he did. Probably I would have stayed on, hold on to his word and prayed through. When God stays, appears silent unto you, keep still and pray. 
when God appears silent unto you, keep still and pray. If you fret, if you, you go to a place that you are not supposed to go, men of God, let's be vigilant. People convinced me. Everybody around me thought I needed to go somewhere. Even though my spirit was saying no, the body, I couldn't withstand it. Would you? Would you stay still when God takes everything away from you? Remember Job? Will you stay still when he takes everything you have lived for? He takes your job away, he takes everything, he turns his back on you. Would you still hold on to his word? When, goes, when God stays silent on you, would you still allow him to lord over you? Would you still accept God's authority? I follow these people to a herbalist. Anytime I talk about this, I cried because never in my life did I think, I'm not saying herbalist is a bad person, or something, but this particular one they took me to was a different ball game. It was somebody that she also goes to church. She was an usher. I mean, somebody you would trust. The person took me to a place. She had gone there to get one. It took her 20 years to get the child. And when I saw it, my friends, my family encouraged me to go with her. I went with this girl to, to a place in Kumasi. When God goes silent, even when you are going to a bad place, sometimes he sends angels to, to, to even alert you. This is how much he loves us. Sometimes even though he allows us to go through the problem, he, even in the problem, he begins to guide your path, guide you out of the problem. I was so frustrated and allowed my needs to over, overcome the love of God for my life. So we went to this, this, this head ballast. Along the way, the taxi driver, would not take us to the place anymore because he insisted I shouldn't go. I do not know this man from Adam. He said, Madam, do you know where you are going? Sisters, do we know where we are going? Looking for husbands, looking for visas, looking for child. Do you know where you are trekking to? Trekking to? Have you asked God? So when Bisonya Mia, if you are the but a beche. Because you go winding and winding and before the band, maybe 10 years, maybe 20, then you say, oh, nyami, oh, funny boy, chill, said then. There be, sometimes it is our actions and attitude. So I follow these people. Even when the taxi driver was insisting I shouldn't go, I did not have the willpower. If I'd listened to series like this, probably I would have had the willpower to tell myself, no. I, I was desperate. Be careful when you are desperate. Be careful when you are desperate for a thing. Go to go first. I followed this people to this herbalist. And when I saw the herbalist, my heart sank because the lady's child is yellow. I won't say fair. And the man is also yellow. Extremely, I mean, yellow. So when I saw, I said, ha, what am I seeing? And the boy just ran and hugged. The boy is about two years old. He went to hug this man. I see they knew each other already. I looked at the lady's face. I looked at man. The man says, God, where am I? In front of my already We started talking and the man said, let's go to my consulting room. When God goes silent on you, hold on to his word. Keep still and pray. Keep still and pray, ladies. Don't go anywhere looking for answers. They have no answers to give you. I followed this man to his room and the, I mean, consulting room and the place was filled with snakes, pictures. And I mean, things, scary stuff was all over the room. I said, God, ain't fun of my bear ready. So I started speaking tongues in my head. Oh, oh my mom, let's not stop talking. Keep speaking the word. I was speaking tongues in my head and I was asking God to forgive me and make a way for me to leave this room because I didn't have the willpower to do that. And the man said, ah, this woman is distorting me. So the lady and the mother, we went, were three. They came looking at me and I was staring up. Tears were just coming down. But I was speaking tongues in my heart. The man threw the carriage again. He said, why are you distorting me? Then I realized, ah, and then this tongues I'm speaking, there's so much power. I started speaking it out. He said, stop it. You are distorting me. They move. Come on, come 
get out of my place. So I don't know. Fimiyako, So we came out from the consulting room, the and we came outside of the room. And the man said, you're a very stubborn person. Why were you speaking those things? You were distorting my name. Speak the language, speak tongues. It will distort the activities. You were distorting me. I couldn't assess you. I said, you will not. I, I didn't say it to him. I was scared. I said it my You will not assess me. How dare you? You will not assess me. Because I have not given you that power. I did, I did not consult God. But I will not give you the authority to assess me. The man said, go. I will not give you the medicine. For being stubborn, I'm going to give you a second medicine. The, me the first medicine he was going to give me, I will drink the medicine and I will sleep for five hours. After that, I'm ready to conceive. So I think within that five hours, that's when probably, because you sleep in his house for five hours, that's when probably he comes in to sleep with you or something. Because the girl's child and the man look the same. So he said, I'm going to give you another one. This one, let's read the Bible and, and eat his word. He said, this one, I'm going to give you you put water on this wood, something like he was telling the woman because he knew I wasn't interested anymore. And three days, worms will come on top of the water and you would drink it. That would be your kids. I said, God forbid. If God, that's a day, I said, if God doesn't give me a child, God forbid, I remain barren. I cried. On our way out, the lady said, Can you keep the secret between me and you? I don't want it to come out. I don't want my husband to know anything about what you are saying, what you've seen. I say, oh, please, trust me. I'll keep it. There's no way I'm going to tell anybody about this. When I came, the dress I wore from head to toe, I removed everything and I burnt it. Because I have, I bent from my panties, my bra, I bent, and I, I, was, I didn't understand why they took me to that place. When God goes silent on you, would you go searching for answers? You might go and not like and not be lucky to come back alive. You might go and not be lucky. Keep still and pray. If you did not hear anything from what I am saying, when God goes silent on you, keep still and pray. Just keep still and pray. So we left the place and we came back. Remember Job, Job, instead of following, following the advice of his wife and friends, Job chose to let God be God. Let God be God in your life. Job 2.20. Would we only, only accept the good things that God is giving us? Would we only let God be God in our lives? Number two, accept God's authority. Accept God's authority. Accept God's authority over your life. Keep believing in him. Keep trusting him. Keep trusting him. Keep believing in him. He's fit and just God. There is no way he will not come through for you. After, it's, after it all is said and done, there's no way. I felt frustrated. I felt I was late in life. I felt there was nothing I could do. When you get to that stage where you are vulnerable, you are facing force. I know it's difficult. I know I've been there. So I know, I know, I know you are going through a lot. I know there's something that is eating you. I know you wish you will not go to where you are supposed to, you are not supposed to go. But please hold on tight. Sometimes he wants to use you for his own glory. I was a very reserved, quiet type of person. But no, no, he was going to use me for his glory. So he stretched me to a level. He realized this is the level I was going to stretch you to. Would you hold on tight to it? Would you? Would you? When it takes everything you have worked hard so much for, would you still hold on tight to him? Would you? Would you? Would you, in the face of difficulties, still say, no, I don't want this from the devil. I want it only from God. Would you? He will test you. He will test you. Some people might be lucky. If you are lucky, thank God. 
You might get a husband easily. You get child, children easy. Everything can be easy for you. But sometimes if he wants to use you for his glory, sisters, then be ready. He will stretch you. For 10 years, I saw raw pain. Raw pain. You can't go to church. You go to church, everybody's looking. Even when you are praising God, they think it's a show. Everything, everybody's watching your steps. Everything you do. I know I've been there. It is difficult when God goes silent on it. But I'm here to tell you that you don't need to go anywhere. It will come quicker than you think. He's just testing you. He wants to trust you more. He wants to love you more. He wants to know that if I give my child this, he's going to value it. Sometimes if you don't even struggle or go through something before you get it, you don't value it. My first pregnancy, I miscarried. I did not really value what I got. It was like, wow, I and I was pregnant. So I was telling, I, would, I did not value it. But when I went through it and I got it, I protected because I had fought with my blood for it. When God goes silent on you. The third one, recognize that silence can be intimate. Recognize that silence can be intimate. Silence can also be a sign of God's trust in you. Sometimes you just go quiet and see. It's a sign that he trusts you. He knows that when he even turns his back on you, you will not leave him. Silence can also be a form of intimacy with God. The question is, can God trust you? To wait for him whilst he's fixing you up. When you're completely comfortable with the person, it is possible to sit in a room together and not utter a word. Do you know that? Sometimes, let's say your husband or your best friend, it's not always you sit and you're talking, blah, blah, blah. No, sometimes you are so comfortable, you're all lost in your thoughts, you're sitting it down, not doing virtually anything. But the intimacy is there. The expressions is there. The love is there. So even though he's gone silent on you, he still loves you. That's why I said, even when I was going to that place, he sent a taxi driver. That means he sent somebody to warn me of the dangers ahead. Recognize that silence can be intimate. So even though he's silent on you, it can be an intimate relationship he's creating with you. Would you wait for him? Would you? Would you? Can he trust you? One of the issues I remember, I went outside this country looking for the fruit of the womb. And I went to see one of the best doctors in West Middlesex Hospital. My brother connected me to this man. Before you see this man, you have to pay so much. And my brother did the connection. So when I went, uh, this God that we serve, eh? the man said, what is it? I said, well, I've been looking for the fruit of the womb for 10 years. And I've been praying. I added it. I said, I thought, I thought everybody would be in the Nyanko So I said, I've been praying. This man started laughing. Praying. In this day, in this modern age, we have been praying. There's no God. He said, I'm, a, I'm an atheist. Just, just say there's no God. And give me three months, I'll give you a child. <laughs> Recognize that silence can be intimate. This man said, I should give him, I should just tell him, right? He's sitting there, just tell me there's no God and give me three months. I said, ah, the devil, you have knocked on the wrong door. Ah. So a mere man can hit his chest and tell me he will not take 10 years to give me a child. I will take only three months to give me a child. I said, why would the devil follow me from Ghana and come here and tell me I should just denounce God for a child? Recognize that silence can be intimate. So I said, you know what? I'm also giving you three months. If God doesn't come through for me, I'll call you. You'll hear from me. And I left. That is when I was building my faith. I was building the intimacy with God. 
I was building a relationship with God. In love, silence can be a sign of intimacy. He wants all of your attention. Sometimes God wants all of your attention. He wants to have a deeper relationship with you. The intimacy, he wants to have, a, a, he wants to be so close to you. Say, the only way he wants to get your attention, probably when he's silent, he will turn and come. Would you? I would wake up and sit down on the floor and sit in silence with God. When I came back, I was facing divorce because they have looked for money to try for me to go and look for a child. And I came back saying, the man says, I should denounce God. So what is wrong if you denounce God and get a child? Mm. When God goes silent on you, even your husband will leave you. If your husband will be silent on you as well. Everybody was silent on me. My mother was not talking to me. Why would you go and not allow this man to give you the medicine he wanted to give you to you? Just say this and go. I gave the man three months. He gave me three months, and I also gave him three months. So when I was going to say, hey, Rade, it has taken you 10 years not to give me a child. I have given this man three months because he gave me three months. How dare him for him to compare himself to you? So I'm also giving you three months. Recognize that silence can be intimate. So I will wake up and sit down on the floor and sit in silence with God. This is the time to develop your relationship with God. Read the Bible to understand. Pray earnestly to him. Enjoy his presence. Sing love songs to make love to God. Embrace him and worship him. After doing all this, I realized that it was not easy to keep talking to God. I took my burden away. Remember the first one I said, I examined my life and the things that was weighing me down, the childbirth, I took it down. Now my weight was light. Now I said to myself, silence is intimate. Even though he's not, he's silent on me. I'm going to have an intimate relationship, a deeper relationship with him where I will talk deep things with him, where I want him to reveal himself. I want him to come through for me. Give me a mind-blowing testimony, even in the state of silence. When God goes silent on you, keep still and pray. When God goes silent on you, keep still and pray. When God goes silent on you, keep still and pray. I prayed. For that three months I gave to the man, I prayed. So the last one is keep talking to God. Just because God seems silent, doesn't mean you should doubt him or stop praying. It's rather increased my faith. Stop saying, Kisera, Kisera, what will happen will happen. They basically ain't see my bro, my phone, pay ten years, then I mean, yeah, see Ben, I mean, so yeah. I said, my other one, no canoe. Be careful the things you say with your mouth. Kisera, Kisera. Kisera, Kisera for no. It's being seen with my bro. A queen, my papa, Pamid, and me. Kisera, Kisera. What will happen will happen. Mm -hmm. If you're a Christian woman, stop saying things like that. Don't talk anyhow. With the words we speak, we speak our life. It's life. Stop saying Kisera, Kisera. God's silence isn't a license for us to turn our backs on him. God's silence is not a license for us to say, if God is not talking to me, then let me also go and look for his protection somewhere. But rather, it's an invitation to press forward. It's an invitation to fight harder. Don't say he's not talking to you, so you will not. You will talk to me. Hey persistently, it breaks resistance. I will pray. I will pray. I will pray. He will talk. You can't be silent. I have let go of my burden. The things I was carrying, that was weighing me. That was preventing me from assessing you. Now it is not there. I've examined myself. I've allowed the authority to come upon me. I went there. I did not take. I did not partake in the things. I could have gotten the child easily. I loved God so much and I didn't know how my conscience was going to eat me up going and coming back with the child without God's hand in it. 9% can be a show off. 
in Tim Kameko Jibi, not just say, be a qua. Nanka Masha may be not just say, yes, you could be. I thought about God and love. I have loved God with all my love. My life, I said, no. I'd rather go barren. I'd rather go barren. When God goes silent on you, he's, he's testing you. He's stretching you beyond to see if you still hold on tight to his word. It is difficult. It is extremely difficult. The friends that you started with, you come and you see them with your husbands, you see them with your children. Christian, Christian life is not easy the way they tell us. It is difficult. It's a difficult journey. Because if it's easy, I could have just taken the wider road and go for a child. The man had done for the lady, and I could have gotten it. Even in the face of divorce, in the face of everything, you are losing everything. Would you still hold on to him? Keep talking to God. Keep talking to God. God was silent on Job for 37 chapters in the, in the Bible. He was silent for 37 chapters. Would you still wait? The 38th chapter, God answered him. It means he's a prayer answering God. I kept talking to him. 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 Me driving, I'm in casa. Me driving, I'm singing worship song. I am praying. I am speaking. I'm speaking on my room. I don't stop talking. Don't stop. Instead of going to discuss your issue with somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't waste minutes or time. Start bargaining with God. If you give me, I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll do that. I was praying. I was talking. To every second I was talking. You remember, I'd given that doctor three months. And I said, within the three months, I was praying, building relationship with God. And I bought three, three test, test strips. But you remember, God was still silent on me. But I had, my feet had increased to a level where, I don't know, I bought three test I said, test tubes, I'm buying three. At the end of the third one, if I don't get pregnant, I would divorce my husband because I, I, they will eventually push me to things I'm not supposed to do. And I'll go and worship my God. And I was happy. I was no more burdened with the things, the wishes of having a child. It was no more there. It wasn't an issue to me. It wasn't like God. I'm worshiping you. I'm pray. I'm 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 praising you. May that was may you were doing to mommy bye by force. No, that again was no more there. That give and take thing, it's gone. It was no more on me. You know, sometimes Christians, hey God, they're busy. I'm so easy to do mine. No, 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 no. You don't do that. He will go silent on you. I've taken everything. And that baggage was no more there. I was living with him. I was having intimacy. We were enjoying ourselves. We were praying together, laughing. He was saying things to me. I'm telling you, when God goes silent on you, still keep praying. So the first month, I took the pregnancy test, and it was negative. I wasn't bored. I wasn't scared anymore. I knew if God was there for me, even if the pregnancy doesn't come through, I knew he was going to take me through. I knew I was not going to beg for bread. I knew he was, I, you know, my faith had moved to another level. He was changing even my faith. When God goes silent on you, be happy. It means he was, he's fixing things. He's changing things in your life. He's going to make it better. Stop moving around. Stop fretting. Stop running around. It would delay your miracle. So the second month, I took the pregnancy test. No show. At first, if it's the previous years, I would fret and I, you know. By this time, many sorry, I was, I mean, I was still doing my work, going up and down. Even I was, still, I went back to school. The third month, I was writing my exam, so I'd forgotten totally about the third. But I was still doing the. I was praying intensively within this, this three months. I've forgotten about the third uh, pregnancy test, so I, I forgot to even take it. And I had a dream. Hmm. When God goes silent on you, persistently break resistance. <laughs> I had a dream. And I saw, I was going somewhere, and I saw two men 
that I said to Nana said they were they had slit open crab, cut off almost piney moon, and they were changing the system of the crab. You know, crabs they lay eggs, but this time they were doing such a way say the crab or bear will bear, it will, it will bear foot like three of them. So I was passing, the man said, Come, he would not believe. Come and see what the Lord can do. So I came. I said, what are you doing to the crab? They said, we are changing the system. I said, I want you to change my system. When God goes silent on you, do not stop praying. Hold on tight to him. Funny bone change to set me. He will turn. Then the man said, go to the next room and have yours done. I went to the next room. He said, lie on the bed. I did. They slit open my womb and they removed everything. This God that we serve is too faithful. When three IVFs I had failed, three, I've done, I don't know any medical way I'm in the surgery I didn't do. They said my tubes were blocked. I have ovarian this, I have hormonal this, and then, 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 and then, 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 then. <laughs> pray, 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 pray. I prayed and I saw myself, they were operating me, sisters. He's too faithful. This God that we serve. As soon many voice, as soon to me, and you went to me, who look at a noon to me, and yeah, yes, and you went to me, who yeah, yes, and they changed my system. I could hear them say, Take this one, change it. He's got spare parts, mm -hmm. do not fret. Do not fret. Is it a husband you are looking for? He's got them. Is it children? Do not fret. Is it a house you are looking for? He's, he's got anything you are looking for. Do not fret. Take that burden down and have intimacy with him. He will come through for you. He slit open my womb. And I said, yeah, right. I'm not anybody. I was just praying. You don't do anything extra. Don't do anything extra. Just hold on to the little faith that you have. They slit open my womb and they changed my system. In the dream when I got my time was big. And I said, oh, my friends will laugh at me. They will say, ah, how come all of a sudden your time is big? The man said, God, if, go, you've gotten what you want. And I got up from the dream. Then I slept again. This time around, we were like in a crusade. And... The man of God said, if you know you have contributed to the work of God, go and get your child. I run as fast as my leg. Please, if you know you are looking for something from God, look for something to do in the church. You know, when I started having that intimacy relationship with God, I heard the soft voice saying, I used to go to church. I would pray. I would do all that. But I didn't have really do anything in the church. Go to the Sunday school. And I said, hey, man, I can't talk. What am I going to do in Sunday school? I heard it. I went to the Sunday school. He, so the devil would come in several ways. And this lady in the, in, in the Sunday school said, no way. She won't allow me to come and help them. They needed hands, though. There were so many children there. The woman said, no way. I said, why? He said, no, I don't need you here. You just go to the meeting. I said, hey, then you are one of the devils. I'm not going. And I met her boy. met her door now. Sometimes, yes, get the stubborn faith. The woman said, for no reason, she hated me. I said, I'm not going. When I've heard it, my ears, as you come here, you are saying, I said, oh, don't worry, I won't go. I sat outside. They needed, the children, children were running all over. The woman said, she was ahead. She said, no. I said, me, I won't go. So I was sit out there. When some, one child, I could let through my car. Then I go and pick her and take her back to the church. And she would take and I was praying. You know, within two weeks, this woman just said she, she stopped the church for no reason. So I moved in there. So this is the work I was doing in church. And I took it personally. I took teaching children personally. Don't do the work of God anyhow. If you want to get something from God, do it with your heart. I took it personally. I teach everybody knows. Every, every child I took interest in every child. And I worked on them. 
I worked on them with Bible verses, word of God, I worked on them. So in the dream, the man said, if you know you have contributed to the work of God, go backstage and pick a child. And I ran. When I got there, there was this huge man. He said, Madam, what have you done? I said, me, I'm in the children's service department. When they ask you, Madam, what have you done? They are coming for a husband. What would you tell them? Are you doing something in church? Are you helping cleaning the church? What are you doing in the church? They will ask you. You have to help to expand the kingdom of God. I said, Madam, what, do you, what have you done? I said, me, I'm in the children's service department too. Sometimes I go to the teenagers when the teachers don't come. I was talking as if, because I needed my miracle. And they had formed a long line. They had the Caucasians, Asians, Indians, different, different faces. So they were standing. The lines were there. So just go and join. So I, didn't, I was so much in there. I didn't look at it. I just went to stand where the white people were. <laughs> and the man said, no, go to where the Africans are. This God that we serve. Oh. <laughs> I ran as fast as my legs could carry me. I went there. No, no, because I was standing at where the, the Caucasians were. I think the, the children got finished or something. When I got there, the man said, oh, it's finished. You can't. You have to come there as in me. I can't come out from this dream. They say I should come for my child. When God goes silent on you, persistent, big resistance. The man said no. Before he could say no, I, I pushed open the door. Ah, this door, this God that we serve. She shared she cried. So now. You know, because I said, they said it's finished, I said no. The man said, oh, madam, because you said it's, they said it's finished and you were insistent, we just ordered for one. Ah, 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 We just ordered for one. It's a box name. And I took it. We just ordered for one. I saw it was finished because I came in late. I said, no. I've contributed to the we children's service department. I spent my time there. I spent my time, my energy, my money, everything. I said, I need mine and it can't get finished. Papa said, we just ordered for one. There's nothing that you are looking for that God will not do for you. If he did it for me for 10 years, He will do it for you. Then I woke up from the dream. And I've forgotten about the pregnancy. So after my exams, I started falling sick. Then my husband said, ah, I hardly do you ever get sick. Probably you are pregnant. I said, me, how can I be pregnant? He liked teasing, so I pretended. Then I remembered that I'd given the month to the master. Hey, to me, I said to myself, ah, this is the third month. Let me go and check. I haven't checked for the last test trip. Ah, Adiawaya Mahana Adiawaya Malisbeth Adiawaya I'm sorry. Mean that they called Byron. They said, There's no way you can have a child. My friends were teasing me. They were laughing at me. Obi didn't buy boy here. Oh, Bompire Bamba, the way. I checked and it was two. When God goes silent on you, I'm telling you, your miracle is on the way. It's too faithful. He's too faithful. I checked and it was too. I told my husband, he said, let's go to the hospital. I don't want to believe this. We went there and he told the doctors, oh, even if it's not true, please don't tell her. It will kill her because she's waited too long. So the doctors kept me there thinking probably if it's not, when the check is not right, they will keep me there for a while. I mean, for me to get over it before, they thought, I'll do something to myself, but I, I had so much faith. I was small because my tubes were blocked. I had nothing going, my the womb was dead. I had nothing going on there. 
And I go and check and they said, the lines are two. Hey. <laughs> After three failed IVFs, thousand and one unknown surgeries, the known and unknown, the concussions, the all the things, the things have it never worked. You know why? He came through for me. Because he took me to a level that I couldn't handle. He stretched me beyond me. I've seen raw pain, raw pain. He gave me one. I thought that was all because they say your tubes are blocked. And when you to me, I thought my first one was oh, oh, I mean, of course, when I'm in then you won't believe it. And so sometimes when God does it for you, and you also do your side, I tell God, if you do it for me, I'll go to places and tell them and tell them about, about you. Oh. And so I went to church and I told God, I told the church people about the same testimony. Sister can you kindly mute? Yeah, thank you. So I went to church and I gave the testimony. One woman who had not menstruated for, she said 16 years, she started menstruating instantly. You see, God wanted to use people. He wants to use you for his cause. So Santa, before he can trust you with his bed, he needs to stretch you. He wants to use you for his cause. That's why he's silent on you. You're looking for husband, you're not getting. He's silent because he wants to use you for his cause. Keep trusting him. Keep praying. He's coming through for you. I know the journey is difficult. Nobody, I have been there, so I know. When everybody's life seems to be going on, they are getting married, they are having babies, they are building, they are going on, they are traveling, they are coming, they are going, and you look, it seems you are, your life is still, it's done that. Nothing is moving. Katawani, men shen cheng, when you look at the sights, you will be moved. Katawani, it's difficult. So when you don't even have, if you have a husband that doesn't really, really believe in God or quite astray, but when you start level, you are the only one fighting. It's more difficult. But if you love God enough and hold on tight to him, he will come through for you. He will come through. I told God, give me a child and I'll go everywhere telling them what you have done for me. I know that he's faithful, he's too faithful. Even when it takes, it will take him for him to come down and do that miracle for he will do it. Just fulfill your side of the bargain. Do it right, don't let God look like a liar. Don't pretend you are praying for everybody to say, oh, one pines, maybe I dear we and then Every man I say, he's a liar. Like me, previously I was praying. Me corner, me back. I looked like me don't even see you here, but my heart was burdened with filth. I had no intimacy with God. They saw being said, "Me see me cross right now, my back. Then my cut, then my back. There was no intimacy." And so all those ten years, you know, it was wasted years. No wonder the doctor said, "How can God take ten years to give you a child?" No wonder. But when I gave the man three months. And I did, I did my part of the work. He came through for me. God came through for me. At least I forgot. I called the doctor and I said, Doc, God, the doctor, when he saw me, he said, Oh, I, I just like you. I don't know. I like you. I want to help you. So I called and I said, Doc, remember I gave you three months? He said, Yes, Doreen, because of you, I want to come to Ghana and buy a land, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I'm pregnant. This man put the phone down, bang, he banged the phone. And I called back. I said, God, Doc, you remember I gave you three months? I told you if God doesn't come through for me, I'll call you. I'll call you because I'm pregnant. He said, uh, did you do IVF? I said, no. I didn't do any IVF. He said, God doesn't exist. I just wanted to prove to you that he exists. I'm pregnant. 
Let's hold on tight to God. Let's keep talking to him. Don't keep quiet. Even when it goes silent on you, don't keep quiet. Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. He's coming through for you. He's coming through for you. Build a relationship with God. And yet, in this really kind of a relationship, proper relationship, relationship that you can relate to God, that kind of relationship. Let him know your fears. Talk to him. He will hear you. He will listen. And he will come through for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Doreen. Sisters, is there anybody in the house who's not praising God at this moment? He is such a faithful God, such a faithful father. What are you waiting for? What have you waited so long for? And you've been asking God and you can't seem to see anything happening. Our sister is here and her testimony should speak to all of us who are waiting. And our faith is beginning to wane. That our God is faithful. He's, you, are, you, are, you are waiting because he's, he's looking for you. He's desiring a relationship with you. He's changing you. He's maturing you. He's, he's making a messenger out of you. And we see all that in our sister. And there's, there's an audio of uh, Joshua Solomon. It's very uh, similar to this particular topic. It says, uh, God, why God is silent. And he talks about three different things that may be happening. God is aligning things in your favor. He's looking for a relationship with you. And he says, when God comes in the end, he doesn't come with a whisper. He comes with a bang. So sisters, be assured that however long you've waited, when God is coming, he's coming with a bang. But he doesn't have to come and see you bitter, angry. He cannot dwell in such an environment. So if any of us are beginning to turn around, please, this is the time to reset. Get on the journey. We pray our sister has told us, seek to do something for him. Be prayerful. Spend your time praying. Because he, he's, he's making a vessel out of you. Thank you, our sister. Thank you so much. I'm sure a lot of us have been encouraged tonight listening to this testimony. And it's going to help put us back on the right track. Not away from God, but towards God. And one thing that's very important, sister, is the devil. She's mentioned it several times. You, you can... You can see that throughout her testimony, he appeared in different people, you know, to just put you off, um, get you to complain, get you to be despondent, your own friends, people's, people's, the things people will say, but you know where to find your source and your encouragement is in the word. And that doesn't change. Our God, she said, don't make God out to be a liar. Let's, let's be ready to show to people who our God is. Let's not hang our shoulders down. Let's be ready to lift up our hands in praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, our sister Doreen. Thank you so much. And thank you that you, you've kept your promise to God and you're going around encouraging people because a lot of us need this kind of encouragement. So thank you so, so much. So I want to, I'm looking at the time and I want to call upon our sister Hetty. Sister Hetty, you've also waited for a long time. For God to come through for us. So please share your story with us. Okay. Tonight Good we are praising evening. God. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening, sisters. Good evening, Stafiona. And thank you for allowing me to share my story on this platform. I'm a testimony. And I'm also surprised God went silent on me. And I also went silent on God because nothing was going through for me. I was angry with myself. I was depressed, everything. So physically, mentally, spiritually, I was sick. I had so much, I held on to so much pain in my heart because nothing, I thought God didn't love me. I'm not too prayerful, but I love God. I'm not that praying, praying type, but I love God. So... I've been married for a long time, 19 years. But I always tell people, I only enjoyed five years in marriage and the rest has been battling with everything, everything. I thought I could do it for myself, handle everything myself without knowing that God, I had to seek for God's guidance. So it started when I 
feel I gave birth my first, second, and my third. So, so it's like my concentration was so much on my kids. I wasn't paying too much attention to my husband. So whatever he does, I, I, I didn't really, but I thought it was, if he wasn't doing anything, I trusted him so much. So when things started hitting, I didn't understand. So I was always fighting. I would like to tell him to sit and I expect him to sit. Nothing was working. So I was angry with myself. Now he started going out. I said, what is going on? So I always fight. But I couldn't tell anybody what I was going through. I wasn't telling my family. I was rather telling his mom, which I thought she would support me. But one day she came and told me that the man is not for me alone. Do I know the number of women he's, she's, um, she's sucked before I got to marry him? I said, okay. And I don't need to tell anyone. So I kept everything to myself. I was always angry with myself. I'm always angry with everybody. That's why I realized God was like, he wasn't minding me because I was doing it with my own will and my own power. So it, it went on for years. I resigned from work because I wasn't concentrating. So I resigned and came home. I started doing little, little things on my own. So a cousin of mine, she's been my pillar, my support, my bag, my encourager, everything. My prayer warrior, she encourages me when I'm down, she lifts me when financial, everything. She's everything to my best friend. I'm not a friend, friend person. And I can't, I, I'm not able to express myself to people. So I keep everything with me, within me. I'm always angry. I pick a knife to cut onion and I'll just cut myself. I'm always angry with myself. So I started working with she just called me that. I said, come and let's work. I said, okay, because I love her. She loves me too. So I like to work with her. Sometimes I go to work and she comes to work and she'll just call me to the office. Then she will lock up her office and just sit. The moment she asks me to say, how are you feeling? I'll burst into tears. I will cry. Cry then she was hurting. What is wrong? I wasn't able to tell her because I thought I was a failure. Then she would encourage she, she would not ask me to tell her anything, but she would just encourage me. To, it's fine, you are fine. Just so one day I was able to open up, told her everything. Then she said, And you kept this to yourself. You thought you could do it by yourself. I said, When I tell you, I think I'm just blowing my horn up, saying, telling everybody what I'm going to, because I, I, I know I'm not the first and I'll not be the last. So she kept on encouraging, tell me, hey, just put water in your mouth in the spiritual. I said, no, 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 no. I have to tell him what, how I feel. Say, it's not work stop. I said, no, I will not be silent. I have to say what I want to say so that when I go, I will not listen to it. I will go and say whatever I will then. My husband says something and then I'll be angry. I'll bring tears but. She kept on encouraging me, praying with me. And so seriously, I became depressed. Sometimes I don't feel like bathing. A whole day I'll be in the room, just call myself to a corner. I wouldn't, I don't feel, I don't feel like bathing. I couldn't sleep. If I don't take any medication, I don't sleep. I had this knee problem. So physically I was sick. I had a knee problem. My knee was hurting. Hello, sorry. My knee was hurting. I've been to the hospital. I've used all sorts of medication. Nothing was working. Because I was angry with myself. I didn't have a forgiving heart. I was always angry, always fighting with myself. I wasn't fighting physically, but I was always fighting within me, asking or thinking about all sorts of things. So she started and, um, encouraging me to pray. She said, okay, she had a group called Closer Walk Wives. Would I like? I said, no. I wasn't interested. She said, okay. So sometimes she sends me a link, a, a prayer topic, then you just say, I pray. So sometimes I pretend and I tell, oh, yes, I did. She said, okay, did you pray? I say, yes, I did. I stopped going to church for four years. I wasn't going to church. I wasn't, I didn't want to go to church because I didn't know why I should even go to God because nothing was working. He went silent and I also went silent when I was angry with him. So this went on for years, for years. I was, so one day I just decided to, I said, no, I need to come out of this marriage. I'm, I'm getting sick. I'm tired of it. So I'll just tell her, I just wanted some, my family wasn't supporting, nobody in my family was supporting me to come 
to ask for divorce or come out of the marriage. They will always, oh, it will be fine. Then I'll get, I say, ah, I'm suffering. You are telling me it will be fine. What will be fine? Nothing will be fine. I just wanted to hear what I want to hear. I wasn't getting anybody to tell me what I wanted to hear that, okay, it's good, come out. So I went to my husband's uncle, reported everything to him, came to my mom, reported to him. My mom said, Hetty, so you've been going through all these things and you kept it to yourself. You didn't tell anyone. I said, I don't know what to say. No, you can't fight, fight your own battles. We need to pray. I said, Mommy, I'm afraid. Nothing is working. I just want to say, okay, where? Where are you going to? I said, I just want to come out of it. So who is going to support you? She said, she's not going to encourage you. So we need to work. And I said, no, I wasn't ready. So I just went off. All I wanted was out of the mind. So I just wanted somebody who would tell me, okay, I'm helping you to come out. And now my pain, the pains in my knee, my hip, I, when I go to work, I can't even stand. My sister will tell me, and my sister is my madam as well. She says, Hetty. The, is it the weight? I said, I don't know. You go to hospital, doctor will tell you it's the weight. So I'm on medication, painkillers. When I'm asked to take 500 ml, oh, I take 1,000. 20, I'll take four. I take double dose. I don't sleep. In the night, everybody sleeps and I'll just be walking around the room. So I said, okay, now that I don't sleep, I'll just be praying with Joy FM. So I tune my phone to Joy FM and we'll be praying. And sometimes I pray. And when Time I pray, God answer, He listens. But in the next the next day, I'll just go back for all my trash and just carry my own problems again. So she kept on and she never went off on me. She kept on and anytime she comes to work and she sees I'm down, she'll just call me to her office. She will allow me to cry, bring out every pain in me. So I think last two years, December, she called me. And she said, hey, where are you? I so said, I was with my sister's intention. I said, okay, I'm, I'm sending you a link. Pastor Adeline is coming on to share it. So just join. I said, okay. So I was sitting I said, I wouldn't join anything because what I want to hear is not what they are going to say. So I was sitting quietly. I said, okay, let me just take my phone to Zoom and just listen to whatever Pastor Adeline. And Pastor Adeline was, she really spoke. I really like this. I said, ah, so I really enjoyed it. Can you just add me to that? Which she said, okay. The next moment, Sister Fa called me. Said, oh, you were, I was asked to, I said, yes, I really enjoyed it. So she started, Sister Fa started encouraging. She calls me to talk to me. So I said, mm, this woman sounds nice. So let me open up to her. So one day I called her and I asked her, could I talk to her? She said, yes. I was very down. I thought I was, I've done so much with my sister. I've talked too much. She's fed. I thought she was fed, but she wasn't fed up. She wasn't giving up on me. She kept on praying for me. She kept on encouraging that it will be fine. Just keep quiet and pray. Anytime you are in trouble, just pray. But I said, prayer, prayer, prayer. The thing is not working. I'm still here praying. What should I do? Okay, let me just do what she's saying and see. Maybe it will work. So Stefa put me on Sunday school. So Sundays I joined her Bible studies and I started enjoying it. So one day she preached on um, we talked about forgiveness. So after the Bible class, I called her and I said, Stefa, forgiveness. This is what I'm going to, but I think after she said, No, you've not forgiven. I said, forgiving. I said, For this is what I wanted. So I was expecting her to say, Okay, fine, divorce is fine. What she told me was, no. I said, ah, who is this woman? I just wanted to hear something. You are saying something else. She, she talked to me. She said, hey, you've not forgiven. I said, well, I'm forgiven, but I haven't forgotten. And she said, no, you have to forgive and forget. That is where your healing comes. I said, okay. She talked. I was angry at her because that is not what I wanted to hear from her. So after she talked, I went off. And I sat, lay, lay on my bed and I started crying. I cried and I said, okay, I will try. Everybody is saying the same thing to me. I just want one person to help me. And fortunately, also, I did have friends who tell me, I want to take you here. I would have followed anybody anywhere to find solutions for my happiness. But they were all speaking the same language to me that I should turn to God, I should pray. Even though I was praying, I'm not somebody who walk up past, I don't walk around anyhow. I pray, but I'm not that 
pray up full person, always on the edge. No, I'm not that bad. But I pray, I talk to God, he listens, he does anything. So when Stephen told me to forgive, I said, okay, I'll try then. I said, that's the same thing my sister tells me to do. So I'll add A, B, C, D and see what happens. I'll give it a try. My sisters, it was like magic. That day I forgave myself, prayed, cried. I'm always on this. So we started praying for our husbands, praying for our family. One day I was just lying down and the pain in my knee, now it came to my hip, both hips. I couldn't even walk. I have to drag my feet all the time. So I prayed to God that any pain, wherever it is, just Lord, save me. So when I lay on the bed, I just felt something just came out of my body. I said, what is this? So the next day I said, the pain was just unbearable. I went to the hospital and so the same doctor who has been taking care of me for years, I went to him, told him about my pain. And he said, Hetty, this pain has been there for, can you go and take an extra for a pelvic extra and bring it? I said, okay. I went to the hospital, I took the extra. After the extra, the lady, a lady who took the extra, she just looked at me and she made a face, I said, what face is that? Is there anything wrong with me? She said, no, no, you are fine. Just go and give it to your doctor. And I was supposed to see the doctor on side. I said, okay, if there's nothing wrong with me, it means it's the same normal painkillers he's going to give me. Let me just buy my own painkillers and stay. So I bought my own painkillers, followed my friends to Ibri for a funeral. A mate of my father passed, so we went to Ibri for the funeral. So when we came back, my sister, I called myself and I went, does the same? She said, what you do? I said, no, I said, no, take it to the hospital. I said, okay. So on Saturday, I went and doctor said, Hetty, you have to get a surgery done on your hip. I said, what? Say your hip bone is off. There's nothing holding your body and your, I said, ah. So he showed me both hips. I said, really? So all this years, this is what was happening. So because I was holding on to pain, and unforgiveness in my heart, even I wasn't feeling the pain, this is what was going on. But after I have forgiven genuinely and accepted Christ and just forgiven that, okay, now I have forgiven everything. I will not talk, I'll just pray in it, I'll pray for him. This is my, uh, my physical um, healing is coming. Okay, so he booked me for a surgery in May. He said, I'm um, 28th of May. I said, okay, then let me get it. So he was, I was there, I think 17th. He called and said, hey, you had, I want your surgery done on Sunday, that is 21st. I said, doc, I'm not ready. He said, why are you not ready? I said, doc, I have a that and there was a retreat going on that I wanted to join that retreat. I said, doc, I'm not ready. I'm not, I'm not set. I haven't done anything for my home. He said, no, you are due for surgery. So you need to come. So Friday, I want to see you in Kolebu. Well, I've not, my, my husband and I, we've not been talking for almost nine months. We are not talking. We sleep on the same bed. It's pillows that divide us. We don't talk. So I called my sister and asked her so many questions. I told her, I said, I, don't, I wouldn't tell. She said, no, you need to tell him. Tell him you are going to say. So it's when I tell him, but he's not going to do anything. He's not going to say, but it is your duty to tell him. I said, this woman worries me. Okay, let me just do as she said. So I told him. All he said was to save Jenny. That is all he could say. I said, save Jenny. I said, God forbid, I'll go and come back and glorify God. And he was, everybody will see the good works of God. So my song is, for the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around, has turned it around. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around for my good. So I went to Kolebu that Friday. A friend of mine held me to get to Kolebu. She picked me up from home, went to Kolebu. The doctor met me and I'm a BP patient. So when I went, they took me to a ward. I was ushered in I said, okay, I need to take your vitals, your BP. So I told the nurse, she pulled my hand, took my BP and my BP was, 11675. I said, no, nurse, please, it's not right. I'm a BP patient. I'm the lo the least is 14500. She said, ah, okay. On your folder is written. Just I mean I say yes. 
I said, can you please give me some water to him? She gave me water. She took the vital and it was still 116. Now the down has dropped to 70. I said, what is going on? Initially, the doctor said, I'll take two pints of blood. So I need two people to donate. So when I got there, he said, okay, that blood has been sorted out. So the lab technician came, wanted to check my, he said, ah, she has SS blood. So now we have to put on stockings for her. I said, ah, what is going on here? So I was there, the doctor came and said, Etty, don't take any of your medications. I said, ah, is it for real? Okay. I lay down, so I started praying. I sing, I was sing, I, I, like, I like to sing. I sang, so I called my sister. I said, this is, I'm now in Kolebu. I called my mom and told her, I said, okay. My husband wasn't mine. He didn't call me on Friday, on Saturday. And the surgery was due for Sunday. Sunday, 10 a.m. The doctor on Saturday evening, he told the nurses they should get me ready for theater on Sunday at 10 a.m. So I was ready. One nurse, theater nurse came and said, no, you are not due for surgery. You are the third person. Doctor said you are the first. She said, no, you are the third person for surgery. So it was like back and forth. The rest. I, said, I was just lying down calmly. So they were back and forth. The doctor said, no, she's the first. She's not going to. She got angry that why am I the first? Because mine is my hip, not my knee. And somebody's knee and they need to do that one first. I said, ah. I was just lying down quietly. The anesthetist came. He came to talk to me. He said, okay, they are to inject you. This, he spoke to me and said, I'm giving you four injections. Later, he said, no, I'll give you six injections because of your weight and the type of surgery you are going to say, total hip replacement. I said, okay, I'm okay. They took me to the theater and my BP started dropping. So at first I was told I was going to be blindfolded half, it's like, yes, they have. But later I, I realized I was gone. So throughout the surgery, I was off. The surgery was successful. Five hours, I came back and it's like they had to check my BP to correct everything. Nothing went wrong. The surgery was on Sunday. On Monday, I was asked to start walking. I said, what is it? I wasn't feeling anything. I started walking on Monday. The next Friday, I was out of the hospital. I came home and everything was just falling in place. I said, ah, is that how God works? I said, okay, when he starts answering your prayers, when he starts working on you, everything falls in place. So all this while, I was just ranting, crying, carrying my own cross, running around. He had a purpose for me. He had time. He just wanted to see how patient I was, how patient I was. So I was just there. Surgery was successful. I came home. Actually, when I came out of there, I didn't come. I went to my sister's, my father's place in Tishinunga. So that was what, where I was living. My husband wasn't coming here, nothing. He wasn't doing anything. I was worried. I just was like, on my, I caught, I said, I think this marriage is, I said, thank God I'm out of that house. My BP is down. I'm not thinking about, it. I'm not going back. I was there, so I said, no, you are going back. I said, no, 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 I'm not going back. Now I'm thinking about it myself. I said, yes, you've worked on your physical healing. Now you're going to work on your spiritual healing as well. I said, oh, I'm done. I know I'm done. So I was here for, I think four months. And one day I just went to, for review in the hospital. I went and he saw me and he pretended as if he didn't know me. So I said, ah, I was so much worried, but I didn't bother because I, in my mind, I was done with him. The next day he called me and said, hey, today you were, I saw you today and you were looking very good. I was surprised. I just kept quiet. I said, looking good. I said, thank you. I said, is it me that he was talking to? Because he doesn't talk to me. I said, thank you. So I went up. So after four months, I wanted to come back. Home. I wanted to come. So the week that I wanted to come, I still saw, I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared to come. So I just prayed and told God, God, I'm not ready. Just give me another. When are you, when do you want me to come back home? I called my sister, same sister that I'm trying. She's on closer work when she's on the plateau. I don't want to mention her. I'm trying hard not to mention her name. So I called her. 
and she spoke to me. We spoke for over an hour, encouraging me, talking to me, what to write, okay. Now I'm ready to go home. The moment she dropped the call, my husband called me. My sister, I couldn't believe it. We talked for two hours. Both of us can't even talk for two minutes without fighting. We talked for two hours. He was telling me things that has happened. Yeah. I was just quiet on the phone. And he asked, are you on the phone? I said, yes, I'm, I'm here. He, would, he told me so many things. I was surprised. I said, ah, is it me that he's talking to? But God, I thought it was over. He weren't answering my question. Now, just one day and all these things are happening. I said, okay. I kept quiet. He, I said, okay. He was telling me things that he's going through, things that are happening to him. And I said, ah, is it me that he's talking to? Okay. Then I started singing. I don't know how to sing it, but I love that song. I love that. I started singing it in my heart. So I decided to go home. I packed all my belongings and went back to my house. And it has been good. Even though it's good. And I thank God for all the things that he's done for me. My physical healing was so amazing. For 20 years, I've been battling with my knee. Not knowing it was my hip. The hip surgery, I'm going to have two hip replacements. I've done one. The other one, I'm not feeling any pain. Like before, now I can walk perfectly, but I'm still in the healing process. I always tell people that I'm still in the healing process. He's been so good to me. I have a whole lot of things to say. If I say I should, I'll just talk, 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 and never, never, never finish. Sisters, let's wait upon the Lord and he will answer us at the right time. When he starts working on you, he will never stop until he is done. So I'm still in the work. I'm called work in progress. I call myself work in progress. I give thanks to God. I give thanks to Sister Ifua. I give thanks to my sister who introduced me to Closer Work Wives. I listened to Pastor Anline and I said, my case is small. I listened to people's testimonies and I said, mine is just a little thing. And I'm so thankful for the encouragement. Staff Fiona, thank you for checking up on me all the time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm dancing, Papa. Yay! Our <laughs> God is so good. Our God is so good. Hey, thanks God for for all oh, the beautiful work that He does, sisters. Yes. If you are yes. here and I'm tonight sure you are still carrying doubts, then it's you. It's <laughs> you. Our God is faithful, sister Hetty. I remember some that conversations is, we've had. We had yes. <laughs> and our God is, we only see in part, but we just have to trust God. He's so faithful. He oh, is. He is. Who, who else you. is? Oh, you have to thank I thank you. I thank you. Thank you. I, thank I give all thanks to God first. Mm -hmm. My sister who introduced me to closer work. I'm introducing my friends. I'm telling my friends. I'm encouraging. I'm just but I'm just pushing them, but I'm not forcing them. I'm telling them what I'm experiencing, the joy I'm having. I just want them to enjoy same. I just want to mention my sister's name, but I don't want to. I don't want to. I just want to keep her closed. But I thank her. She's been my pillar. She's been I mean, she's been so supportive. She never let me the time. Anytime I'm down, she just lifts me. Sister Fa is always there. Sister Fa calls me at the right oh, time oh. all the time. She calls me when I need him. Sometimes I feel I'm just troubling her. Is it not the same thing I'm going to say? To they are saying the same thing. I know. My sister, for years, she's been encouraged. She's been pushing me. And now I know she has a little peace. She has a she has peace because she's giving me the best solution to everything she didn't ask me to she, she didn't take me anywhere she didn't take me anywhere she 
drew me closer to God. She told me we had somebody who can answer your prayers and he will not ask you for anything. Sometimes I sit and say, if I had had people around me, they would have taken me anywhere. And who are, was I going to now? I'll get my answers and later I'll pay in hundred folds. So sisters, let's learn to wait upon the Lord. She always tells me, she says, I should put water put in, your in your mouth. mouth. In the spiritual, it's like, just keep him quiet. But before I wasn't getting what she was telling me. I said, no, 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 I don't need to keep, keep quiet. I need to say something. But when I started putting that water in my mouth spiritually, everything is, now I'm in my home. My husband can't even predict. He doesn't know when. Now he doesn't know who I am. He knows there are things that I will not just let it go. But now I just, I don't cry anymore. Sometimes I, now I want to cry and I don't cry. The tears that, it doesn't flow. I cry when, I only cry when I'm worshiping God, when I'm in the spirit. I only cry when, now unless I say it's unnecessary tears, it doesn't come anymore. I have inner peace, joy. I'm always happy. Now I'm always happy. Now I can't sleep without it. Now I don't take any pain medication. I don't have any, I'm not on any medication, nothing. Sorry. I'm able to sleep. And even now in the morning, I say, I can't even wake up to even pray. I feel so I say, ah, now I can sleep very well. So I thank God for everything, everything. Stuff you know. Thank you so thank much. You, you, never, you, you don't you just know me on phone, but you're always there for me, Sister Ufua and my sister as well. I thank her so, 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 so much for this God, this this juju man that she, she introduced me to. <laughs> That's how I say it. God is not your back. That's the thing she, she she introduced me to, and I'm so grateful. Okay, so sister, please let's wait upon the Lord. And when he starts working on you, you'll, you, you'll be surprised. Yes, and it will just be one day, just one day and everything will fall in place. Just give Thank glory you. to God, sis. You just give glory to God. And sister, just, just you know, I've, I've gone on my own journey with how to do it as well. When I started, I actually thought it was just a show. Not a show, she was in like entertainment, but you know like how you watch Oprah and Dr. Phil and all those things but I've come to realize that it's actually God working through people's hearts and changing people through testimonies through our sisters older women sharing through the word the doctrine and I've also realized when we're putting it together that most of the time it's not even us at where God is just using us because the Lord led me to call Sister Hetty just yesterday and I, I prayed, you know, I, I said to start, if he, I know somebody who would align with this testimony, she has a big story to tell, but I'm not sure. I have to ask her and I pray to God. And when I spoke to her, she said, oh, and I said, oh, I prayed, you know. And in the next second, she said, no, I'll do this. And, you know, consequently, she's been so confident, so willing, ready to tell her story. And that's what God does. You know, he's using all of us so that in the end, we'll have a story to tell to encourage another. It's a chain effect. So please, if you have stories to share, you are encouraging. I'm sure tonight a lot of people have laid down their burdens. And these are real stories, real hearts being touched. And like our sisters have shared, the solution is nowhere. We've all walked that journey before. The solution is nowhere but with God and the word. And my one of my favorite scriptures is Isaiah 1 verse 90. He who is willing and obedient will eat the good of the land. So... People will come and tell you to do all sorts, but you bear the consequences. Look at what my sister is saying today. She's happy. She's at peace, you know, and we, we learned something at the retreat that when you, you take away that kind of bitterness, you experience healing. And we see that at work in our sister. When she let go of everything, her, body, her whole body healed. And when she spoke to me about how she went through the surgery, even as she was relying on her husband and the husband not being there, that everything went well. Everything she needed for the surgery to go well happened. The, the, the wound healed. God puts in place the right people. She came home before time. And that's the God that we said. When people turn their backs on you, he'll be there. He says, look, just look to me. Hold on to me. Once you trust me, I'll turn everything around. And since I had to, yours is, is just an amazing testimony. Sister Doreen, thank you for blessing us so much. I feel like calling Sister Ifwa. Sister Ifwa, tell us something. <laughs> tell us something. And our sister, that sister Hetty keeps mentioning, you are a wonderful woman. You are a wonderful woman. God bless you so much. God bless you. Therefore, 
she's so wonderful. She's an amazing sister. Yeah. She's an amazing sister. You know. You know, Any, she, in my next generation, I still want her as a sister. <laughs> hallelujah. God bless you, our sister. And for leading her to the right place and telling her to just be still. For put years, him. she never went off for me. She yeah, was always him. there for me. Amen. Amen. Always Amen. there for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you. She knows who she is and yeah, we give glory to God. God bless you. Dr. Efwa, is it? Yeah. Please tell us something. Is there anything you want to share with us? <laughs> you know, when you said if uh, I didn't say anything because you are like five if words. You know yourself now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> tell us a bit of, if it, yeah, I, I, yeah, tell us a bit about this gen, five minutes. Oh, I'm, I'm at this gen, you know, as Hetty was speaking, I was so bad because she doesn't know how her story encourages me. She thinks I'm strong, am I? <laughs> I'm still working in progress and her story encourages me a lot. I remember when we started talking and she was struggling with the forgiveness bit. And I think she's even gone further than I have. <laughs> so I just want to say God bless you, Mr. Hetty, for yes. your testimony. It's awesome. It's our awesome. stuff. You and I also know, right? When yeah. she, she, she was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. And, and you see, when God does it, you know that it's done. That's all I want to say. That's Mr. Hetty, God bless it's so you. so encouraging. It mm. is so encouraging. Exactly. So, so encouraging. Well, and she thinks that I'm the one helping her. She doesn't know that she's the one helping me. Yeah. <laughs> God, that's how God works. I mean, if I were to tell my story, it's the same thing. I thought I was helping somebody. And God has sent the person to help me. It's just the, the work of God. We just have to trust Amen. it because we see in part. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Sisters, thank you. Thank we've had so much tonight. Um, I would like to say what are, any, what are the questions you have, but today I want to say, what are you taking away? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it back to my toolkit session. Let's, let's make it a little bit interactive. And please, God has blessed us so much tonight that we can't just come and listen and go away, shut down and say, okay, yes. What are you taking away? What, what has changed in your mind about God? What, what are the burdens that you've been carrying, the bitterness? What is it that you are willing to let go of tonight? If, if our sisters are willing to share such intimate details, then um, we, should, we should also share to bless God because he's so faithful. I mean, I, I, know, I, know, I know some of, of, of the, the things that happen, but even as my sister is telling the story, it's just... I just can't help but just keep praising God. He's so faithful. So any comments, anything we want to say, please open up. Do you know anyone who needs encouragement? Do you know a story like that that you can share, you know, about God's faithfulness? Because he is faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. We thank God. We thank God so much. Sister Doreen, is there something you want to add after listening to our sister's testimony? Is there anything you want to... So as if you have any questions for any of our sisters who have spoken you, you can also open up and share now i think the room has gone quiet god has just done his work oh. god has just done his work i'm going to allow a few more minutes for questions nana nan okay uh, pastor line is there something you want to add to what you've heard today i mean um we just we just <laughs> I know you say glory to God, but thank God that he's used you to, to lead us the right direction. Yeah. Wow. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, um, Sister Fiona. Thank you so much, Sister Haiti. Sister Doreen, thank you all so much. So for me, I actually tonight, I'm very quiet because, you know, I'm just seeing the goodness and the greatness of God just manifesting, you know, yeah. um, you know, in all of these testimonies, I'm very deeply touched and deeply humbled, you know, I mean, what a yeah. blessing. And, you know, in some of these testimonies and sharings, we have come to realize that we don't even know each other face to face. Yeah. We don't know each other face to face, but the Lord, but but the Lord just passes through the word, his word, which is spirit and his life, to take forth life. We don't know each other, but the but the Lord 
the Lord manifests his love through us, through the work he's doing. This, this, this morning or today, today I just, you know, got a prompting in my spirit to, you know, to, to love more or love better. That was the prompting I got, you know, and I, I felt like that probably tomorrow as we are discussing on the wisdom night, you know, I would share this with all of us. And I, I think now I see why the Lord was prompting me okay. because most of the time, whatever I share or how I share or whatever in my mind, it's, I, I, I speak as I receive or trans, you know, but I feel like the Lord is drawing my attention to, 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 you know, to become attentive to certain things. So some, some people are going through a very difficult time and they need to be heard, they need to be listened to, and they need to be loved, you know? And sometimes in some, some of the cases, you know, we, we probably just answer the question. So we just, you know, sometimes we don't have time. Me, me especially sometimes, I, I, I'm unable to even reply my WhatsApp messages, you know, it's loaded, it's plenty, you know, but now I feel like, no, 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 no. I need to pay attention. I need to pay attention. I need to make time, you know? So as I'm listening to all of this and I'm, I'm realizing how people have walked, you know, their journeys, it's coming to me so strongly that love is the message. And the message is love and love involves time and love involves listening and love is truth and love is God's wisdom and love is that which he's called us to do and that which he's called us to be. It's all about his love and that's what must be passed on out there. And that's, you know, that, that's, that's really what all this is about. I'm so blessed. I'm so touched. I, I thank God. I mean, I'm just blown away. It's been an amazing evening. No wonder we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. What if our sisters decided not to share? That would not have been good. They have shared, it's brought glory to God, but it has also crippled the activity of the enemy. It has really crippled the activity of the enemy because sisters have been encouraged. I myself have been encouraged. I Me, mean, I didn't even know that they even mention my name somewhere. I don't even know because I have no clue. I'm just doing the work. Do you understand? You know, no clue, which, which tells us that this is really God's kingdom. He is building, He's building His church, He's doing the work. I mean, how is it that Sister Hetty gets a call from her husband at that point and, and, and that happens to be the breakthrough? That has to be God, you know. I thank God for Sister Ifwa. I thank God for Sister Hetty's sister who didn't give up. That is love. They didn't give up. They kept, you know, encouraging. Kept they, they had hope. I'm just so touched and I'm just so blessed. And I thank God for what he's doing. Sisters, I, I just want to encourage us. So I want you to know that you are all deeply loved. If there's anything we've ever said that came across as too harsh or some way, you know, it seemed as if we were not there, or we didn't have time, we, we ask you to please forgive us. I, 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 I really... I really need to say this. There have been messages I haven't seen, voice notes I've not replied, I've not heard, I've not listened to plenty. And I, I don't think that that's what it's supposed to be. God has called me to do the work, I must do the work by his help. So I'm just asking all of you, if there's any point in time that I wasn't available, I wasn't there, you know, whatever, I ask you to please forgive me. And I ask that we walk in love. And I ask that let's do this together, looking at our father. Our father is able and our father is the one who is doing his work. Let us love one another. Let us keep hope in him alive. And, and let's keep at it. Keep looking to Jesus. He is God. Look at the first testimony. She said she started to develop intimacy with God. There came a time, even that which she was looking for was not the issue. Have you noticed how at the point our prayers have changed? We've even stopped pursuing. Sometimes I don't even know what to ask for because anytime we gather, we always say, Holy Spirit, we don't know how, how to pray as we ought, but you give us utterance. Then off we go and we go with his utterance. 
And sometimes you realize that your attention has gone off your problem, your issue, and you are saying, Lord, I want to know you more. Lord, I want to love you more. And see what he does with that. I thank you, Lord, so much. Thank you, sisters, for sharing. May the Lord bless you and fill you. And this is your ministry. He has given you a ministry. Sister Doreen rightly said it, really. This is it. The part you have struggled, the part you have hustled, that becomes your ministry. The lonely days you have walked. Now there are other sisters who are just as lonely. Now they need us. Let's all come together and get this work done. Let's all come together. Sisters, I love you all and I thank you all. Each of you is a necessary part of this assignment. The Lord is building it all together. And each of us, we are all a necessary part of it. It's not going to be Sister Fiona alone, Sister Ephra alone, Sister Ephra alone. And, you know, it's not, it's not like that. All of us are a necessary and a critical part of us. And each of us is a minister in the house of God. Let's minister grace, truth, and love. And please, by all means, stay with truth. Stay with love. Stay with God's word. Always stay. Always stay with it. There are three that bear witness. The blood of Jesus bears witness. The word of God bears witness and the spirit of God. These three. And putting all these three together, that's love. God bless yes. you so much. Mr. Fiona, God Thank bless you. you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Okay, so, Pastor Alan, please stay with us. So, our sister has a testimony. Sister Selam, are you here? And then please, if you can pray for our sisters and for us, those of us who are waiting for us to, to, to get closer to God. But please, before that, we'll call upon our sister Selon, who apparently has a testimony to share with us. Hi, good Hi. evening. Good evening, sister. So this one, sister, if you ask, puts me on the spot. But I've also not been doing well because when, when everything happened, I said I would testify. I've testified a few times, but what I said I would have not done it in full. So um, I'm just saying this testimony to encourage us or to encourage everyone here. God has a time and a season for everything. And sometimes you just need to rest in him. Um, I got married in 2013. I mean, with all the fanfare around marriage and immediately the womb watching started. Everybody, when I having a child, when I having a child, after about a year, my husband and I went to the hospital as usual, went to run every test, said there was nothing wrong with us. We should go. No child, not even pregnancy, like not even a pregnancy, positive pregnancy test, nothing. And I'm a medical doctor. So like people were like, well, I'm not serious. My mother would call doctor, this doctor, go and see this doctor, we'll go, go and see that doctor, we'll go. Then it came to a point I said, no, I won't go anywhere again. Then, and then, I was just, I'm not going to see any doctor again. I'm just going to be and leave myself alone. And before that, I had received about two testimonies about having a child. And at a point I was quite discouraged because I mean, you go to church, they'll pray for you, then nothing will happen. Remember the last time I had a testimony, the pastor called my name and I came for it. And he was like, what, why am I here? And then I, I said, I was the reason, I was the one he called. And he said, oh, I should go and sleep and stop stressing myself out. Why am I stressed out? I should go and enjoy my marriage. Why am I worried? You have a child, a child will come, I should go. And I went to sit down, I was like, ah, prophet, pa. I mean, I thought you would lay your hand on me or, you know, come and pour some oil on my head. Tell me to go and rest. So I went back to sit down. So, I mean, we're there at a point, I started having some abdominal pain. I went to the hospital and then I was given a diagnosis. And in fact, the diagnosis was quite devastating because they said, there was no way I could have a child unless I go and do IVF. And, um, and that's from what they had seen. I went to have a surgery and then they realized that they said all my tubes were blocked. And I mean, there was a lot going on to the point that when I have my mess, I'll have severe pain. My abdomen will become bloated. I mean, if you see me, you think I'm pregnant. Then when the menses go, it will go away. So I told my husband, I, I told my husband that this IVF, I won't do it. So I'll have a child. Then my husband was like, my husband is quite prayerful. Then he said, okay, whatever I want to do, he's cool with it. So we're there for about, I think about six months. Then I think one, about, I think it was in August 2019 or so. And I told my husband that this thing, this, this whole thing, I don't know. 
let's see, I'm thinking I'm going to give myself some time again. I was under pressure. I have a friend who lives abroad who was prepared to pay for the IVF. So it wasn't even a money matter. The guy was like, ah, what am I waiting for? If it's IVF, how much is it? I should tell him, he'll send the money. And I told him that we shouldn't worry. January 2020, we'll go and do the IVF. So she relax. So September 20, 2019, I started feeling funny. I missed my period. And I'd missed my period before. I mean, like I missed my period and like, nothing will happen. We'll go and do the test. It's negative. I missed my period. And I was feeling tired, funny, funny way, you know. And I told my husband, I look. I'm going to do this. Uh, I said, I wanted, I wanted to go and see the doctor the week after. Then we'll see, I start working towards IVF. Because it looks like, this time I'm beginning, I started stressing out again. My husband was like, oh, no, I should just relax. And then I'll be fine. I said, oh, okay. So then my husband said, okay, fine. I should go and take a pregnancy test. And I told my husband, oh, me, I'm not pregnant. Ah, I'm not pregnant. So my husband told me to put the test down. So I put the test down and woke up in the morning. When I took the test, and it was positive. I almost collapsed. So I woke him up, say, I say, I say, and I showed it to him. Then he said, oh, take another test. So I went and took a second test. It was positive again. That day I was confused because, I mean, we married for six years. Everybody around is now looking at you. The doctor has told you that your gynecologist tells you that you can't have a child. You have to go and do IVF. So I called my gynecologist. I told the gynecologist that, doc, I have a positive pregnancy test. He just he was quiet on the line. And he asked me, am I sure? I said, yes. He said, okay, I should come for scan. So Sunday, we went for the scan. When, he stood, when we did the scan and he saw that really I was pregnant, he, what he said was, I was a miracle. He started praising God and thanking God. The whole pregnancy, I had a whole lot of issues, but I will say to the glory of God, that I came out and skated. I did have a preterm child, but God has been with us. My child is healthy. She's normal. Everything is fine. If you see her now and they tell she's preterm, you wouldn't believe it. And I really say that to the glory of God. I mean, at the end, I was beginning to get despair. My husband was never, I mean, he was never worried. My husband was like, oh, the child will come. But at the, at the end, I started listening to people again. So I, th- I say that we should all, if, we, we, if God has promised something for us and he has a time for it, we should just leave it alone. Sometimes just leave it alone, rest in him. Pray and just rest in the promise of God. You don't have to go and stress yourself out. You, you, you are doing anything. Because all the up and down was going. And we, my mother would say, go to hospital here. And I'll go. Go to this hospital here. I'll go. And she'll call my husband. And she's very upset. My, my mother-in-law, let's go to Nigeria for them to pray for you. I'll pay for the trip. Let's go to this prophet. I'll pay for the trip. And I said, I'm not going anyway. But I mean, at the end of the day, God really came through for me. And my daughter is very healthy. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sister Selon. Thank you for adding the cream and icing our cake. God bless you so much. Sisters, if you are living here tonight doubting God, then you weren't here tonight. Whatever it is that you are waiting on God for, he is faithful and he will surely do it. What, what marvels me is the fact that he is even performing his own spiritual surgery on on our bodies you know he created that so he can change it anyhow he wants so men will say that oh this is a is 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 a finished case but he's performing surgeries to rearrange things to align things to his glory this is our god who can do this can do anything anything yes. yesterday we were doing um in my bible study class we were treating um the scripture where Elisha and the prophet of Baal were uh, in a contest and he, when he got to his turn, he actually asked for more water to drench the wood and still mm-hmm. fire came out. That's the God that we serve. He can do anything. Sisters, mm-hmm. don't be afraid. Just believe. Pastor Adeline, please, would you pray for us? Yes, Thank please. You. Yes. Thank you so much, Sister Selom. Thank you so much for your testimony. Very powerful indeed. And Thank you so much, Sister Doreen. Thank you so much, Sister Hetty. Thank you. Indeed, God is good and God is faithful. Uh, Father, we thank you so much. We are grateful unto you. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you that you are our Father. We thank you for giving us a deep revelation of who you are, that you are Father to us that you love us deeply, that you care. But no matter what we are going through, it's actually a walk of love. That in that walk of love, you help us, you teach us, you counsel us, you correct us, you hold us close to you. 
You bring us to a place of intimacy. You give us understanding. You cause us to have an understanding of purpose. You bring us into alignment. And at the end of the day, all things work together for good. We thank you. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for what has happened in this place. That even as the testimonies have been shared, it's been so solemn in this place because all the glory belongs to you. We are grateful. Father, this evening, I pray for grace. I pray for grace. The Bible says that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. I pray for grace, the grace to the grace to endure, the grace to press on, the grace to pray, that grace that saves us, that grace that heals us, the grace to share the testimony, the grace to believe that God is who he says he is, the grace to hold on to his promises in the difficult times when different voices are speaking, the grace to hear you, the grace to know that my God will come through for me. I pray, Father, that that grace grace this evening that grace will be dispersed to all that each will go home with grace upon grace with increase in grace in the name of Jesus I pray for grace that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will abound to all to anyone that is feeling down or feeling weak or feeling in doubt may you receive grace tonight in the name of Jesus grace to press on grace I thank you that you really made it clear in the scriptures. Mary did not need Joseph to conceive, but she conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. For them that are waiting for babies, Father, let a conception take place in the name of Jesus. Father, do what only you can do. You operate in the realms of the supernatural and you cause it to manifest in the realms of the natural. Do what only you can do. You know the hearts of your, of your daughters. You know what each one comes to in the secret place, the request that they have, that I pray that each will be met at the unique point of their need, that grace, grace will locate them and that they'll come back and testify. I pray for the love of God, the love of God. I pray for that love to be shed abroad in our hearts by the sweet Holy Spirit. I pray that that love on the inside of us will cause us to walk in, in, in the supernatural love described in 1 Corinthians 13. The love that never fails, that love that is patient and kind, that love that doesn't keep records of wrongs. That love that trusts you and obeys you, and that love that knows that God will come through. I pray for love. I pray for love. Let there be love shed amongst us. Let there be love in our hearts. I pray, Father, that you will give us a fresh baptism of your love. That no matter what we are going through, whether somebody is talking to us or not, whether somebody is treating us well or not, the love of God will be so supreme in our hearts that we will make time for people, that we will care for them, that we will pray for them, that we will love them, even in the secret place, even when they are not aware, we will continue to love them. Let your love prevail amongst us, amongst us as a family, as a fellowship, as one body of Christ. Let love be evident in all of the marriages. Let love be evident in their bedrooms. Let none be holding grudges. Let none be at a place of, oh, I'm not talking to you, but let love reign. In the name of Jesus, I pray for sweet fellowship. The fellowship that only the Holy Spirit can give us. That which causes us to be united, to be fellows in one ship, to be united in Christ in the marriage, to be united together in the ministry, to be together, to come together. The, the, the spirit of God causes us to be one. I pray tonight, let us all get a deep revelation of your oneness, of, of multiples coming together into unity of diversity coming together into unity, of differences, differences, difference in opinion, difference in the way we do things, different, different, but then we all come together as one in Christ Jesus because in him, in him, all things hold together. 
I pray, Father, grant us the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. As we are leaving this place, I pray that sisters will be encouraged. I pray that those who have been at that place that, you know, they say, ah, what are they talking about, Christ? What are they saying? That place where, they, you know, there was a bit of confusion, that place where there was a bit of irritation, that place where they felt, maybe they don't understand my situation. I, I don't know. Can't I find somebody to agree with me in the way I'm feeling, you know, according to my flesh? I pray that anyone that is at that place will be comforted baseline to know that look daughter you are deeply loved you are deeply loved you are deeply loved by god and by all of us and that together we will walk this and that we will come back and testify father we praise you i pray for all of us who have gathered to listen i pray that all these testimonies have greatly encouraged us and caused us to know that we don't have to give up for there's nothing that our God cannot do. What he can't do does not exist. He's God all by himself. And no word of the Lord shall ever fall to the ground. It won't fail. No word of God will fail. Father, we are grateful. We thank you. We thank you. I pray that everyone that has gone through this difficult, any kind of situation that they looked up to you, that they will step into their ministry that they will keep testifying wherever they are called to and that they won't give up. They won't back down and they won't slow down. That none of us is going to say that I've gotten what I want and that is it. But rather, we will develop a closer walk with you. Every day, closer walk with you, closer walk with you, walking more and more in humility, more and more in humility, more and more in love, knowing that Apart from God, we can do nothing. Anything we have is just by your grace. All that we are doing is just by your grace. It's just by your love. It's just by the spirit of God. We thank you. I thank you for Sister Fiona. I thank you for all the sisters, Sister Josephine, Sister Nanaya, Sister. I thank you for all the sisters that have been holding up the How To Series. Sister Frimpuma, Sister Jemima, I thank you for all of them. I pray, Father, that they will increasingly be sensitive to your spirit, to hear you, so that the topics week after week, week after week, it will simply be the topic that the spirit of the Lord gives. Just as you have been doing, we are humbly asking for more. I thank you for all sisters that make time even for this and make time to call a friend, to call a friend, tell a friend, to tell a friend. I thank you. I thank you that in everybody's small way, ministry is taking place and it brings you glory. We are grateful. Father, we thank you. As we leave this place, Lord, continue to have your way with each of us. Continue to draw us close to your soul and continue to cause us to mature in you. Let our lives be like a sweet smelling fragrance, Lord, in our homes, at, at our workplaces, wherever we find ourselves. Even our smile, let it really reflect that, ah, indeed, the spirit of God lives in us. We give you praise, we give you glory, we thank you. All of these testimonies are sealed with the precious blood of Jesus. I pray. And that even as our sister said that there was another knee that needed a surgery, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that that knee will experience total healing, complete recovery in the name of Jesus, that we will come back and testify. We will testify that that knee has totally and completely recovered, that there is no pain anywhere, that the scans are saying a different message, that the doctors are saying your knee is perfect. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Father, I pray anyone that is seeking healing in any part of their body or in their marriage, let them experience it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let them experience it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Did you not say that science, wonders, and miracles shall follow them that believe? We are the remnants that believes. We believe. We believe in you. Our faith is in you. Our confidence is in you. And I know that their testimonies will flow. I give you praise. I give you glory. I thank you so much, Lord, for all that you've done in this place. May you forever 
be glorified. May you forever be lifted up. May you forever be exalted. And Father, may we worship you and you alone, for you are worthy. In Jesus' name, we've prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 So much. And God bless you too for the shining the light of God's word through our hearts always and always. God bless you so much. And Sister Efe, thank you so much for your support. Sisters, the Lord has spoken tonight. May we go and love him and show love to others as well. God bless you all. I'm handing over to the Holy Spirit team. Please, who's taking over from me? Hello, Tatiana. Yes, Sister Justin. Thank you so much. Sister Efe, can you please transfer host rights? Thank you. So we end right. the recording. God bless you. Yes, we end the recording. Um, sorry, Thank you.